Um, good afternoon, everyone. This is Brian Chapman. We're waiting for just a few more participants. And so we'll start in about one minute. All right, let's see if we can get our showcase up and going. I'd like to welcome all of you to this afternoon's Jackson Growth Alliance Showcase featuring SI Now, attracting investments to Jackson County in Southern Illinois. My name is Brian Chapman. I'm your host today, and I'm really excited about learning more about the great work that SI Now is doing for us. We do have a, a little agenda for you. I'd like to tell you a little bit about what Jackson Growth Alliance is all about introduce you to our investors, make introductions of the board, and then we'll get into the showcase featuring Sarah Gray and the work of SI Now. After that, then we'll have questions for the presenter. Uh, any and all of you who are community leaders and participating today, please feel free then to uh, share any updates or any uh, great work that you're currently undergoing in the economic development arena. I'd like to then also talk to you a little bit about membership, and then we'll wrap it up with that. Let me tell you now just a little bit about Jackson Growth Alliance. Jackson Growth Alliance is an economic development body created to represent and advocate for Jackson County through retention, growth, and attraction efforts. Members are public, private, and non-for-profit contributors who have a vested interest in the success of Jackson County. We have open membership, so we'd like for you to consider joining. Each year we encourage new members to join our efforts and from these members then board seats become available and are elected. With that, we have a wide range of donors and contributors from the Southern Illinois Airport to SIH to SIU to Kevin Clark. We have the Jackson County Board and Government Egyptian Electric Cooperative Association, IESO, Admiral Parkway, Joni Beth Bailey Law Office, the City of Murfreesboro, the City of Carbondale, First Southern Bank, Country Financial, the First Bank and Trust Company of Murfreesboro, Fager McGee, just to name a few. Our board chair is Brooke Guthman. She runs the Outreach and Services for Egyptian Electric Cooperative Association. Brooke, welcome, glad to have you here and thank you for all the great work that you do. Our other board members are comprised of Lynn Anderson Lindbergh with Southern Illinois University, Joni Beth Bailey with Joni Beth Bailey Law Office, Kevin Clark with the Southern Illinois University Foundation, John Dozier, president of First Southern Bank, Brad Fager, the city of Murfreesboro, Sarah Gray, as we'll, we'll learn more about Sarah and her great work later on. She's with Southern Illinois Healthcare. Jamie Green with Country Financial. Steve Mitchell, the Economic Development Director for the City of Carbondale. Tomiko Mueller, who's Jackson County Board. And Gary Schaefer, Manager of the Southern Illinois Airport Authority. Thank you for all, all the great work that you do and for being here with us, Board of Directors. With that, I would like to then make a quick introduction of, for Sarah Gray. She is our showcase host and she is attracting new investments to Jackson County and to all of Southern Illinois. Sarah comes to us then from SIH where her role is the system director of business and economic development. 
She focuses on leading economic development initiatives to improve the health and well being of all communities SIH serves, as well as implementing new programs, processes, and solutions to improve the overall experience of seeking health care at SIH. Prior to Sarah's role at SIH, she worked for BJ. C Healthcare in St. Louis as the program director of BJC Collaboratives. Her work there was to improve the quality of healthcare services, implement clinical programs, achieve economic savings, and develop innovative solutions to shared challenges. Sarah obtained her Bachelor's of Arts in Business from Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee and has a dual master's of business administration, a master of healthcare administration from St. Louis University. Sarah serves on numerous boards, including that of Jackson Growth Alliance. Sarah, thank you for all the great work that you do, including the Carbondale Chamber. Uh, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that tomorrow, we're lucky to have Sarah, by the way, she, she's now a new member of the Delta Leadership uh, initiative where she is one of four members representing Southern Illinois, where she'll go through a one-year training uh, program sponsored by the Delta Regional Authority. And tomorrow is her son's second birthday. So Sarah, you're super busy. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Brian, for the introduction, and thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited uh, to be here today to share more about the SI Now initiative and specifically uh, about a proposal that we have for attracting investment to Southern Illinois. So with that, I will go ahead and share my screen here. Can everyone see that okay? Give me a thumbs up. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so first um, I'll start by providing a brief overview of the SI Now initiative for those who aren't familiar with it and then move into uh, the progress that we've made through task forces focused on marketing Southern Illinois, education and workforce development, and then also business growth and development. Um, finally, providing some additional detail about the proposal specifically for attracting investment to Southern Illinois. So first, as a brief overview, SI Now is serving as a regional hub for economic development for the 17 Southern counties of Illinois to advance our region as a great place to live, work, and do business. The vision is to support the region in becoming a thriving, economically diverse environment for business and industry with a growing population, labor force, per capita income, and expanding tax base while elevating an already high quality of life that we have here. And the purpose is congruent with those um, with that of Jackson Growth Alliance and our partnering economic development organizations in Southern Illinois to create a positive ripple effect for our citizens, communities, business owners, and local governments in Southern Illinois by creating jobs and opportunities for upward economic mobility, improving the well-being and quality of life for those living here, attracting new businesses and residents, equipping our workforce with specialized skills, and then by attracting those new businesses and residents, creating opportunities to increase revenue through increased sales and clients, increasing the tax base for local governments, and in turn, reducing or stabilizing tax burdens on citizens and businesses. We launched a business case earlier this year, uh, really launching the SI Now brand and our website and a business case um, that focused on answering the question, why is SI Now needed? We have some fantastic economic development organizations like JGA, like Redco, like Jefferson County Development Corporation and others throughout the 17 Southern counties. And the goal of SI now is to create a regional approach and to collaborate with these organizations in an effort to create alignment and pool our resources to pursue common goals to create synergy and really to advance the idea of regionalism, that a win anywhere in Southern Illinois is a win for all of us. Eliminating silos, 
and also achieving the benefits of scale as it pertains to collaborating with outside stakeholders as a region. SI now has been focused on supporting existing businesses, attracting and expanding business in the region, focusing on workforce development and educational opportunities, and then also creating a win mentality by elevating perceptions of Southern Illinois, starting first within the region and then extending beyond. This graphic shows the SI Now footprint, so the 17 Southern counties, which represents about 370,000 residents. So the footprint extends up um, north to Mount Vernon and Jefferson County, over to Randolph County in the west, down to Alexander County in the south, and over on the eastern front with the Shawnee National Forest. And I think that this image is just really powerful and that it shows the assets that we have collectively as a region. If you think about the incredible assets that we have here in Jackson County, of course, uh, a world-class university and in SIU, incredible community colleges. Um, we have Southern Illinois Healthcare, um, additional incredible businesses. Um, and same goes for um, Williamson County and then uh, the airports that we have in Jackson and Williamson County. Um, and then looking out again, the incredible outdoor and recreational opportunities that we have through the Shawnee National Forest, the Shawnee Wine Trail, um, the port districts, uh, the interstates, and, and I could certainly go on, um, but I think that those on this call are, are pretty familiar with the assets that we have here in Southern Illinois um, and can see just through this map, the benefits that we have in terms of working together as a region and leveraging our joint assets. Oh, I just reviewing the chat here. Okay, hopefully I'm coming through okay to everyone. We've had the opportunity to engage with key leaders uh, across Southern Illinois in many industries, uh, specifically banking and finance, manufacturing and agriculture, hospitality and tourism, healthcare, commercial and retail, transportation, higher education and K through 12, civic and community coalition, university, coalitions, university-based initiatives, uh, economic development organizations, local development districts, government entities and officials, and workforce development organizations. Uh, and again, SI Now is aiming to serve as a hub of this activity to connect um, those across the region who are invested in and working towards economic growth in Southern Illinois. A regional plan has been developed for SI Now, looking specifically at supporting and expanding existing businesses, attracting new business to the region, focusing on worker training and employment growth in high wage sectors through workforce development and expanding educational opportunities. And then again, marketing the region both externally, internally and externally. To achieve these goals, um, the SI Now Advisory Board formed task forces in those specific areas, business growth and development, education and workforce development, and marketing. We've also established an overall SI Now committee um, comprised of over 70 leaders in, um, in many different industries across the geography of the 17 Southern counties. The advisory board is comprised of 11 members also representing uh, different industries and the geography of Southern Illinois. Um, and their role is really to make key decisions and guide strategy for SI Now, and as well as oversee the work of the task forces. In addition to the task forces, we also have a business leaders council comprised of business leaders throughout the region. Um, and really, they've provided tremendous strategic guidance and consulting in terms of the direction of SI Now. So as you can see from, from this graphic, we've had the opportunity to engage um, many dozens and dozens of key leaders from across the region to collaboratively develop this plan to move the region forward. This is a snapshot of the SI Now Advisory Board, again, representatives from different industries and, um, and different parts of Southern Illinois, um, representing 
business leaders, economic development leaders, higher education leaders, healthcare leaders, uh, workforce development leaders, and, and community coalition leaders as well. And this group came together um, in looking at the task forces and really wanted to take a good look first at what the economic data is showing, the economic indicators are showing in the 17 Southern counties of Illinois. And when analyzing this data with the help of Greater Egypt and MantraCon, we were able to uncover some concerning trends, including a population loss from 2010 to 2019, and, and that's not including the recent census um, information that uh, was released in late 2020. Um, but prior to that, we had a 3.6% population loss. Um, and even more concerning, this is a longer time span from 2006 to 2020, but we saw a 17% reduction in total labor force during that time period mostly due to an aging population um, and then not filling that workforce um, work age population with younger with the younger generation and then finally a widening gap in per capita personal income for the SI now region compared to the rest of the United States we found that the SI now PCPI was only 72 percent of that of the U.S. overall on average to, to really address these concerning trends, the advisory board looked at how we can try to close that gap. Um, first, reducing annual population loss, improving the total labor force change, and then reducing the per capita wage gap. To do so, uh, the three task forces have been hard at work to, um, to make a difference and make an impact on these metrics. First, uh, the marketing task force has established a website, uh, southernillinoisnow.org. And the purpose of this website is to serve as a landing point for those who are interested in learning more about Southern Illinois as a place to live, as a place to work, and as a place to do business. Um, so certainly these snapshots that I have included does not do the website justice, and I would encourage everyone to check out the website and click through if they haven't had a chance to already. But essentially, the website includes these three sections and just has a host of resources uh, for those who are interested in learning more about Southern Illinois from a cost of living calculator and links to available housing and health care. Um, to available training programs or available job listings. And then finally, for those who are interested in doing business here, you can see on the right side, we have the Opportunity Zone Prospectus. Uh, we have an available site listing. So you can click and it links to um, showing where there are available sites throughout the 17 county region um, for those who are interested in locating here um, and so forth. Um, in addition to the website, We've also launched a social media campaign. Our handle is at Southern Illinois Now. We are posting on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And really, our goal has been to share the good in Southern Illinois. Um, so often, there can be kind of an echo chamber of negativity. And our goal is to really highlight and showcase what's great about living in Southern Illinois? What's great about working here and doing business here? Um, unfortunately, I think so often those positive voices are drowned out and, and our goal is to really amplify those. Um, so you can see here, I picked out some Jackson County specific posts that we've made just over the last six months or so. Um, you can see here a post highlighting the growth in the Southern Illinois airport and being named a, two, a 2021 Airport of the Year by IDOT. Um, a shout out to Jackson County for being named as one of Illinois' best counties to live in. And then also the news from the SIU Aviation School, they're packed with Delta Airlines uh, to have an accelerated career path for students here um, who are interested in working for Delta Airlines. So those are just a few examples. Uh, we've also posted more generally um, just some, some reasons why Southern Illinois is a great place to be. So for business owners, we posted this 
average electric industrial rate showing that in in Southern Illinois, the industrial electric rate is 19% lower than the US average. So it's a great place to do business. The costs are lower. Um, also showing the cost of living here from a housing perspective, our cost of living is 16.6% lower than the national average and really illustrating to people, showing people what does that mean? Well, that is the difference between the house you see here on the left in Carbondale, Illinois for $270,000 versus the house in St. Louis, Missouri for the same price. Um, and, and definitely there's quite a difference in terms of the house that you can buy here in Southern Illinois versus in a metropolitan area like St. Louis. Finally, highlighting the beauty of our region um, and also just including um, facts like the daily commute here is 25 minutes shorter than um, on average than it is in Chicago. So you have more time to be outside, to enjoy the beauty of the outdoors. Um, so just including again, the great things about being here. Another aspect of our social media um, campaign has been highlighting stories of business owners and residents in Southern Illinois with that same message why Southern Illinois is a great place to live, work, and do business, what it is about Southern Illinois that has helped to foster businesses success or personal happiness. Uh, so you can see here um, probably some familiar faces. One of them is me, um, but you can see here uh, a partner at Reed Heller and Cannell in Murfreesboro who recently moved here with his family from Chicago, emphasizing that moving to Southern Illinois has created less stress and more quality time together for his family. We highlighted the neighborhood co-op grocery store as well um, and, and highlighted their message uh, to support local businesses and, and emphasizing how, um, how Southern Illinois as a region supports their local businesses. Um, same for William and Keisha Lowe. And, um, and also then my husband and I emphasizing why we moved to Southern Illinois um, on a more personal note uh, for the high quality of life, low cost of living, um, and raising our kids somewhere with a, a very strong sense of community. With each of these YSI highlights, um, we've interviewed the participants um, and asked them specific questions. Why did they love running a business in Southern Illinois? Why is Southern Illinois a great place to pursue a career? In what ways does Southern Illinois offer a high quality of life? Again, just in hopes that sharing these stories will help to inspire others to um, perhaps um, cultivate or rekindle their love for Southern Illinois um, and just focus more on the positives rather than harping on negatives. And then further to help draw more people here to Southern Illinois um, as we're sharing why this is a great place to be. Additionally, uh, the Marketing Task Force has worked with the Arthur Agency here in Carbondale to develop a media library. Uh, we have professional photography, multiple videos underway. Here are some snapshots of Jackson County um, being featured. You'll see um, kind of an, uh, an, an air view of Murfreesboro, uh, one of the SIU campus. 17th Street is featured in a video, as is Compaq International. Um, you'll see the, the football stadium. Um, and then also that's a 17th Street um, bottle. Um, in action. So we're really excited to release these. And the plan is to use this, um, use these assets to further um, our digital campaign by actually targeting um, those who might be interested in moving to Carbondale. Maybe they have ties to Carbondale, they graduated from SIU, they have family here. Um, and then also from a business perspective, um, using it for meetings with site selectors or with business owners that are interested in moving to Southern Illinois, again, to share um, why this is a really great community to do business in. Um, just touching on this really quick, um, I warned Brian that I could, I have a lot to say about this and that I could talk about it for quite a while. Um, education and workforce development. We've also been focused on supporting growth in key high wage industry sectors, 
promoting high wage career pathways, expanding the availability of apprenticeship programs, improving the relationships and pipeline between K through 12 area community colleges and SIU, further developing collaboration and opportunities between SIU and local employers, and then also pursuing um, an initiative that will increase our educate or will aim to increase our educational attainment here in the region, um, looking at the percentage of adults in our region that have a college or career credential by 2025. And so, of course, looking at the SI Now priorities, kind of that three-legged stool, if you will, of marketing, education and workforce development, and business growth and development um, are all intertwined and um, incredibly important to pursue um, if we're going to make a difference and improve the economic indicators that we talked about previously. So we've had the privilege of working with Kathy Lively, the CEO of Mantracon, in addition to Chancellor Austin Lane on these initiatives, and we're looking forward to continuing um, down this path. I also included just a graph of some of the educational attainment um, figures that we've been looking at here in Southern Illinois and identifying some areas of opportunity um, as it relates to both, um, both educational attainment from a post-secondary perspective, but also from um, a certificate, career certificate perspective. Um, looking at apprenticeships and other high wage career pathways that um, that may not uh, follow the traditional pathway um, post high school. Finally, the business growth and development task force um, conducted an activity mapping exercise really with the goal of better understanding the economic development efforts that are currently being pursued throughout Southern Illinois and the 17 Southern counties. And really with the goal of determining where SI now could best accelerate progress towards regional goals and fill gaps while also being very cognizant of not duplicating any work that's already being done. Um, so we had the chance to collaborate with um, many organizations across the um, across the region, and you'll see here their logos highlighted, recognizing that the, the text is very small. It's really just meant to be illustrative. Um, but of course, JGA um, was one of the, the key partners in this activity. And the results showed that economic development organizations in Southern Illinois are incredibly productive and successful and are also devoting a lot of their available resources to business retention and expansion efforts as that is an A1 priority uh, in economic development. And that there is an opportunity for SI now to serve a role in marketing our regional collective assets in Southern Illinois in order to attract investment here. And of course, um, this proposal is in addition to the ongoing efforts that we've mentioned in education and workforce development um, and also in marketing. With that in mind, looking at that gap and potential opportunity, a proposed program for attracting investment to Southern Illinois was developed um, with the intent of showing how businesses and residents can prosper in Southern Illinois and then making the process of investing in Southern Illinois as seamless and as frictionless as possible. So this proposal includes three key functions. Um, first, generating leads for business expansions and relocations to Southern Illinois. This would include engaging site selectors, identifying and pursuing opportunities and in target industry clusters, and then pursuing targeted digital advertising directed at business leaders and decision makers, um, which goes along with what I was mentioning before in the marketing segment. Um, the activities associated with these services would include face-to-face -face meetings, newsletters, attending conferences, attending trade shows, identifying upstream and downstream supply chain opportunities for existing businesses here in Southern Illinois. 
And then from there, managing leads for the business expansions and relocations by working hand in glove with our partnering economic development organizations and the spokes throughout Southern Illinois, um, and also collaborating with statewide agencies and organizations such as DCEO and Intersect Illinois, um, creating a very powerful ecosystem of economic development, um, not only um, at the county level, but then, or city level, but then expanding through the region of Southern Illinois and then throughout the state by working with DCEO and Intersect Illinois. Collaboratively establishing a process with our economic development partners um, in terms of those leads to ensure that there's a transparent and agreed upon um, method of sharing those opportunities and information and then routing the inquiries accordingly. And then making the process of exploring and deciding whether to expand or relocate a business in Southern Illinois as seamless and as frictionless as possible. So this would include providing a very high level of customer service in response to each inquiry, a very quick response, um, and assisting with RFI responses as needed. RFI stands for requests for information, and often they are issued when there's an opportunity for a business to locate and they're interested in seeing what type of sites you have available. And often these requests are um, asking for a response very, very quickly. Um, and it was identified that there could be value in, in SI Now assisting with some of these responses, again, to make the process as seamless and frictionless as possible. Another key aspect would be to work with the economic development entities to ensure that all of our properties and sites are uploaded to a common platform so that not only do we have a comprehensive view of what's available when an opportunity comes up, but also that we're able to identify any gaps that we have throughout the region in terms of sites that are available. Finally, a third function would be attracting talent to Southern Illinois. And of course, attracting investment that is including both the business investment and then talent investment, people investing their time and um, really taking a leap of faith some, in terms of a move, moving their families, taking a job here. Um, so that would include identifying target talent markets, again, using that data and research to identify target markets that are most likely to move to Southern Illinois so that we can get the best bang for our buck when um, marketing. So again, that might be people who have some sort of tie to Southern Illinois. Maybe it's those who are very interested in outdoors and recreation. Um, so looking at how we can reach those folks um, through social media, through um, Google targeting and so forth. Um, it really is just, and it's incredibly sophisticated, all of the tools they, they have um, to get your message in front of the right people. Um, and with that also, again, not only using the, the targeted digital advertising, but continuing our social media campaigns um, and also updating our website so that it can serve as um, a resource for folks to learn about Southern Illinois. Just checking my time here, I'm talking quite a bit, um, but we'll, we'll go through these next slides pretty quickly so we'll have plenty of time for questions. This proposal was developed not only through input, collaborative input of the Business Growth and Development Task Force, but also through research done externally, looking at what's being done in business and talent attraction, um, both in the Midwest and across the country. And largely, business attraction is being pursued on a regional basis in order to distribute costs and leverage assets, as well as to serve as a first point of contact for site selectors and businesses, again, to make that process as easy as possible. Through this regional approach, communities are equipped to leverage joint assets for outreach to site selectors to quickly identify a site that meets desired specifications, um, and again, to eliminate any friction in the process. From a talent attraction standpoint, this is also largely um, being pursued um, in, in a very strategic way. Cities, regions, and states across the country have very elaborate place marketing campaigns enticing residents and workers to relocate to their area. 
some campaigns even include financial incentives. Um, the, the benefits of that are, you know, it, they seem to be working at least on a short term, um, but certainly time will tell as to how effective um, those have been. For example, in Topeka, they're um, luring residents with $15,000 to move there, um, specifically people who have remote jobs. Um, there are uh, Quincy, Illinois is doing something similar. I think it's at, at about $5,000. Um, and there are elaborate place marketing campaigns ongoing in Paducah and also in Peoria, Illinois. And finally, unfortunately, we're combating some negative publicity from our neighboring state in Indiana. I'm sure that everyone on this call has seen some of those billboards that they have um, trying to convince people here in Southern Illinois to move to Indiana. With that, it seems as though there is an incredibly important opportunity for us to take control of our narrative and um, resist letting an outside party, an outside state tell the story of what it's like to live in Southern Illinois. Uh, we also conducted an internal assessment. I won't read through this in detail, but essentially focusing on, we have the strengths uh, through the SI Now initiative, the brand website, um, a great foundation of our, our social media and media library, um, incredible partnering organizations, and an opportunity to leverage this um, and to pursue this investment attraction work. Um, and to combat the negative regional economic trends that we've been faced with. With that, of course, um, an endeavor like this does require extensive resourcing. We've put together a draft budget. I've included more detail about the budget in the appendix of this presentation, um, but essentially between personnel, software and tools, um, any consulting help, marketing, outreach, engagement, events, um, it would be at about a half million dollars per year um, with a three-year total um, coming in at about 1.5 million. And with that, our preliminary draft implementation plan includes, of course, identifying and securing funding sources. And SIH has been uh, a strong supporter of SI Now and will continue to be a leading investor in this work. And at this point, we are interested in uh, seeing if there are other organizations that are interested in, in an investment in this work. Um, but certainly, uh, first and foremost, with JGA, we're interested in collaborating and seeing how we can continue to work together. Um, it's very important that we're seeking unique sources of funding um, as the work that's being done by all of the economic development entities across Southern Illinois. They're doing incredible, irreplaceable work. Um, and so the idea is that we would be part of this ecosystem all working together. Um, looking at creating a standalone legal entity for SI Now, becoming a 501c6. Um, collaboratively establishing that process for routing inquiries and managing attract, attraction leads in a way that everyone is comfortable with um, and in a collaborative approach, establishing metrics for success and determining a responsibility matrix, hiring staff, um, and then looking at any consulting needs, vendor needs that we would have, ensuring that our properties and sites are uploaded to a common platform. Um, and then really getting started executing those functions, services, and activities that were outlined in the proposed program purpose. With that, um, I would love to um, hear any questions from the group, um, any comments or, or points of clarification. Sarah, this, this is Brian, just an, an excellent job. Thank you so much for that, uh, very comprehensive. Um, just some phenomenal work done by you and, and all of those involved with the SI Now initiative. Um, in regards to staffing, I'm making the assumption that, that that's going to really depend upon the ability to raise dollars. Yes? Absolutely. And, and certainly this preliminary budget um, may need refinement based on funds that are um, able to be raised and, and where we're at. 
um, but certainly with SIH committing to, to being and continuing to be a lead investor, we're confident that we'll be able to embark on this work and we're excited uh, to identify uh, partners that, that are also interested in investing in this economic development work of attracting investment. And, and thank you, Sarah, for pointing out the fact when it comes to investment and trying to secure those dollars that SI now is not competing with those same investors that JGA is, is relying upon. Yes. Uh, so for all of our board members here today and participants with us, you know, be rest assured that we're not competing for the same dollar. This is a very collaborative effort. And I really appreciate uh, you and the efforts of SI now to recognize that, you know, dollars are scarce. Absolutely. And, and we're all in this together. We're all working towards elevating our region as a great place to live, work, and to do business and to overcome the economic challenges that are a reality here in Southern Illinois. And JGA is playing an incredibly important role in that, um, as are the the um, counterpart uh, county level economic development organizations throughout Southern Illinois. I have a little map here um, in my, uh, on my uh, bulletin board that I'm looking at. Um, and SI now is looking to accelerate progress and fill a regional gap uh, in the ecosystem. And then finally, uh, Sarah, I'd like to point out the fact um, that uh, with the with this proposal and in this initiative, uh, you know you're really focusing in on business attraction and you're listing out for potential investors, you know the uh, the industrial parks and sites that are currently available, and that certainly plays into the role that JGA is working on and trying to create a joint industrial park between the city of Carbondale, the city of Murfreesboro, and Jackson County Board because. Quite frankly, Jackson County is out of shovel-ready large industrial park space, you know, and so, you know, it's imperative for us to get that space up and going so we can get it onto the SI Now uh, website and so that you all can market it for us. So can you tell us a little bit about any sort of investment uh, uh, opportunities, uh, solicitations that you've had to date? Yeah, I think that at this point, we're really interested in establishing the infrastructure needed and that process um, needed to um, take in those inquiries. Um, certainly, we have gotten a lot of interest from our SI Now website. We were even um, contacted by the Japan Times um, and asked to be featured in their Midwest report um, detailing investment opportunities for Japanese investors. Um, specifically, they were interested in Southern Illinois as it um, provides an opportunity for supply chain resilience for Japanese investors. So I think that's just one example of, um, of the benefit of, you know, pursuing this regional approach and showing the type of reach that we can get. And that is just with, you know, this organic work, not even any sort of paid digital advertising or attending trade shows or um, site selection conferences or anything like that. Um, so certainly we're interested in, um, in pursuing a very strategic approach to generating those leads, both through um, site selectors and um, business leaders, and also looking at focusing on industry clusters that are specifically, um, that we are well poised for growth here in Southern Illinois. Uh, so being, again, being very strategic about um, which industries we're going after and um, how our assets play to those industries. Very nice. At this point, let's go ahead and open it up to our panelists as well as participants. If you can raise your hand or use chat, now's a great opportunity to, to engage Sarah and learn more about, the, about this initiative. Sarah, just one comment uh, from me, or maybe a, a set of comments, but uh, I always appreciate uh, learning more. I mean, I, obviously, I've been involved with SI now for some time, but every time I listen to one of these presentations, I learn a little something new. And, and I, from Carbondale's perspective, we do appreciate having a single point of contact on a regional basis for employer attraction. Uh, I think that's super important. 
and the level of professionalism uh, that we've seen display here, I think is super important uh, to provide a, a great positive energy image for Southern Illinois. So I just want to make that comment and then say we fully support what you're doing. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Hello, Sarah. Can you hear me? I can. This is Kevin Clark. Uh, thank you for your, your work. Uh, it's very uh, well put together, polished. Uh, I think this level of connectivity is needed for our region. As you had stated, one win for Southern Illinois is a win for everybody. And so um, wanted to know as, as uh, the various groups are coming across with various ideas is at the administrative level, is there a, a vetting process to ensure that, um, that we're not kind of uh, uh, jointly going after the same kind of grants and then kind of diminishing our ability to secure them at the federal level and or also making sure that we have a, a large continuum of, of wherewithal to put towards any of these uh, funding opportunities? That's an excellent question and, and one that we definitely need to keep top of mind as we move forward, especially in identifying um, potential funding sources. It's definitely been done um, at the advisory board level and then also through the business growth and development task force. Um, even informally, I've I've stayed very uh, in very close connection with Lynn and, and others to ensure that we are on the same page in terms of grant applications and are often exchanging letters of support um, and, or even applying for grants jointly. Um, Lynn or, or Stephen or Brian, if you have anything else on, on that to add. Hi, Sarah, this is Lynn. I definitely agree that we are staying in, in close contact with each other. Uh, SIU has, of course, many, many departments that could be involved in uh, grant applications and funding uh, solicitations, but we, we do, through the research park, try to keep up with those as much as possible. And really what's, I think, most important is that we're in communication with each other. So whether it's Johnny Logan or Manchacon or Greater Egypt or SIU, we're all trying to, as you said, provide letters of support, keep each other in the loop, and certainly look for the broader picture and how we all can contribute to Southern Illinois. Uh, Steve Mitchell uh, has also been you know, involved in several of our, our grant applications and working together. So we are um, certainly not operating as little silos anymore. We're constantly texting and emailing and, hey, have you seen this? This is something we could work together on. Kevin, it was an excellent uh, question on your part. And, and for me, when Sarah showed the big, you know, the map of, of the red Southern 17 counties, it highlights the fact that there are multiple counties that really do not have an active economic development arm or initiative out promoting for them. It's, most of those counties don't have something called, you know, a greater Egypt Regional Planning Council that they can go to and help write grants. And so, you know, for me, SI now has found a niche, an area where they can really make a difference for the entire region. And, and like Lynn said, it is all about communication. So excellent question. For those of you, though, that um, are participants, i.e. not panelists, if you have any questions, you know, Amy, Deb, Natalie, William, Ken, just uh, go ahead and, and raise your hand and Jennifer will get you, uh, get you involved. I'm not seeing anyone else. If not, let's go ahead and open it up to community leader updates. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share in the economic development arena at this time? or questions for our presenter. I'm not hearing any. Hello, Brian. Uh, I have a question yes, about sure. uh, luring young professionals to the area because um, so many of the people in my professional sector, attorneys are retiring. And I noticed you spotlighted Mr. Cannell joining a, a well-established firm as those partners retired. And I, um, I noticed that a lot of the emphasis is on industry, but uh, is there a particular prong of this that's luring professionals, accountants and attorneys, maybe investment advisors, wealth advisors, that sort of thing? 
That's an excellent point, Joni, and definitely one that we want to keep top of mind as we um, continue down this path of refining our strategic approach for talent attraction. And certainly it's something that SIH is very interested in as well, um, attracting specific professionals uh, with specific qualifications um, or degrees or certifications here to Southern Illinois to meet the job demand that we have. And so I think that that is something that we will incorporate um, in the strategy. And I, there may be an opportunity to take, um, take a look at, um, you know, similar to an activity mapping exercise, looking at where those job opportunities um, or, or job openings might become available in the coming years and then specifically um, tailoring our attraction initiatives to those needs. You may or may not know, but the um, state of Illinois Bar has a fellowship for rural attorneys mm -hmm. where they pay part of the salary uh, to a local law firm who will bring someone in. Uh, and I perused that batch of candidates. John Urbis, my neighbor and colleague is on the board or the reviewing panel. And I think if you could, um, if you could somehow give this promotional material to that rural fellowship initiative, it could uh, direct. So you have law students that are wanting those fellowships and they tailor their um, pairing. It's kind of like after you get out of med school, you pair up with a hospital. So it's a pairing exercise. So they identify their target communities and rank them. And I'm not, I think that if you provided this promotional material to the um, graduating attorneys so they could identify this as an appealing area to move to, the local firms who are looking for a fellowship opportunity might have a better pool of candidates because the pool of candidates was admittedly very thin and weak. But it's, a, it's, it's pointing p attorneys this way, but I'm not, not sure they know about your great resources to highlight what a great place it is to live and work. Absolutely. And, and Joni, I'd be happy to connect with you after this call to, um, to obtain some contact information so that I can connect with that group and share this information. Okay, I'll, I'll work with you on that. I'll give you a contact. I. I have two quick comments here. One, Amy Mills says that she's very proud of the work of SI Now and to be a part of that. And then it looks like we have a question on Facebook. Jennifer? Yes, um, this is from Nathan Palumbo and he asks, I would like to know if SI Now has any consideration for climate change at all. That's a great question and, and certainly one that continues to be top of mind. We have been looking at clean energy as a, a targeted industry cluster and one that Southern Illinois would be well positioned for and, and well poised for. Um, I'd love to invite um, Lynn Anderson Lindbergh to, to speak more to the clean energy, energy industry cluster. Um, and some of the work that we've done uh, looking at that industry specifically. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, yes, we are uh, SIU uh, Carbondale as well as SIU Edwardsville have partnered with several businesses and organizations in the region and are part of a successful Build Back Better uh, award through Chicago focused on clean energy. One of the areas that we're looking at is the modernization of the electric grid as well as um, battery storage and workforce related to clean energy. And of course, climate change certainly is, is at the crux of all of that. We have the opportunity then to apply for quite a few uh, bucks that we'll be working on between now and the uh, end of March to try and bring that money to Southern Illinois, as well as the rest of Illinois with a focus on clean energy and what impact we can have on uh, climate change from a very positive standpoint, rather than continuing to contribute uh, to, to some of the, the bad things, you know, that have happened in past years with coal being a primary uh, heating source in Southern Illinois. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you, Nathan, for your question. 
Jennifer, do you have any other questions out there? I do not see any. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then I'm happy to move on and talk just a little bit about membership for those who may be interested in joining JGA. Sarah, thank you so much. It's an excellent job. And as always, you know, whatever JGA can do to help with that work, we're going to do it. Uh, we're in, we're one of the biggest cheerleaders that you have. So again, thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, in regards to JGA membership, for those of you who might be interested, there we have a section called uh, community member board seats. And we have six permanent board seats that are filled by the city of Murfreesboro, Egyptian Electric, Jackson County Board, Southern Illinois Airport Authority, SI, Southern Illinois Healthcare, I'm sorry, and Southern Illinois University of Carbondale. But we do have community board seats and you can become a member of anywhere from $250 a year to $10,000 a year annually. And we're happy to, uh, to have you become a part of JGA. And I think, if, Jennifer, you go to the last page then in closing, my contact information is there for anyone who's interested as well as I can happy to send you additional information on membership. Um, with that, again, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. I found it very informational. Uh, there's great work that's happening. We've got to get the word out to all of our friends and family, invite them, all of our, everyone that we know that, to come to Southern Illinois, to enjoy our resources, think about uh, relocating here and becoming a, an active citizen in Southern Illinois. With that, oh, I do have a couple of chats. Let's see, we have some thank yous from Sarah, thank yous from Lynn and from Deb Barnett, excellent. I do believe we're gonna wrap it up at, on the hour. Thank you all for being here and we look forward to our next uh, JGA showcase coming up in a couple of months.